Okay, it says we're live. I'm gonna trust it. I don't wanna do the, oh no, we'll do the phone thing, right? Oh, go to Facebook and check it all out. So, hey, Friday night, Aaron Stewart with the Little Black Couch. So happy to be with you. Hey, there's my good friend right there. We're gonna go, oh, I don't need groups, I need pages. Go into one of what, let's see, page. Okay, so it should come on here. And that's when you know that you're live. Boom, okay, looks like we're live. And Boost is unavailable. So, hey, hey everybody, Aaron Stewart from Little Black Couch. Thanks for um, joining me today. It's Friday night, I'm getting ready to leave. It's 6.09, and hey, look who's joined us. Lance, he's always with us. Boom, boom. Hey bud, how are ya? So it's been a hot minute since I've uh, jumped on and done a live. We've been really busy. So I wanted to do kind of a quick update on what we've accomplished this week, which has been really fun. And um, as well as some things going on and some thoughts that I've had during the week. I've had lots of thoughts, but um, because of some of the things we were testing, I didn't want to go live and risk uh, messing with some things that we were testing with the Josie Post system. So let's hit the, um, the intro and we'll jump right into it. Do you love entrepreneurship? I do. I have been researching and living entrepreneurship for the last 30 years, and I believe entrepreneurship is the most efficient method to solve world problems. And I am passionate about helping those who dare to dream find solutions to these problems as they learn to live their definition of success. Hi. My name is Aaron Stewart, and I am so glad you have joined us today. And I welcome you now to The Little Black Couch, a journey in entrepreneurship. Oop, where'd we go? Oh my word. All right, come on, here we go. Watch, nobody panic. I'm right here with ya. Oh, geez, folks. So I updated the software, and it's kind of causing me some fits. So let's do this. We're gonna we're we're going ahead and going right on the fly. So ignore the green screen over there. It's not really green. It's really a beautiful sunset. Oh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, oh, and I've got an old thing on there from yeah. See, that's how long it's been. It's been so long since I've been on here. Look at that. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, everybody. Um, good to have you with me. I, I again in that intro it says that. We're happy to have you here, and obviously I'm talking about our good friend, Buddy, and me. And look, his, his camera's not even working. This update's killing me. This literally is killing me. So where is that one? I think that one's there. There he is. Okay. There's Buddy. Hey, bud. Okay. So come back here. Okay. Real quickly, um, a couple uh, quick updates on Josu Post and what we're doing really quickly. So one of the things that we thought was really important to do is when, you know, when you ask a service to do something for you, if they don't ever report back, that can be a little frustrating, right? So we wanted to make sure that we had a decent reporting system back to our clients. And so I'm going to bring up my screen real quick. And let's see if I can make this huge, if it'll allow me to. Okay, so this so this is an email now that you will receive when one of your um, drips have been done. And so you publish and then we go ahead and we take your, uh, we make your graphics and then we publish them for you. And so at the end of the drip, so you can see right here on this one, I, um, I, I did a, it's called a, we're calling it an online marketing workflow. It's actually, we'll probably call it a drip. So I started on November 14th. And then it went through Facebook and then Facebook and YouTube. And then I got graphics uh, on the morning of November 15th to post onto Instagram um, because it's very hard to have a third party do it. On the 16th on Facebook, Twitter on the 17th, Instagram, not Instagram, LinkedIn on the 18th, Pinterest on the 19th, and then Tumblr and then Facebook and then Pinterest. And then it says on November 22nd, this is when you're done. Right, so that's today. So I got this one today, so that tested out well. And the feedback that we're getting from our beta testers and some of the other folks 
looking at it, say this is like super powerful. So I'd like to hear your opinion on that. If you think this would be helpful, if this just like makes it, if this makes it so it's uh, sort of comforting that you can see that we finished it, right? That we actually got it done. And it will also show you if we had a problem. Like, so there are obviously some problems that can happen. Let's say if a, an app gets disconnected or whatever, but this will have all of that sort of ready to, to show you. And then another thing that we built in this week and then tested, and that's why I haven't been um, on this week, is that we wanted to, we're realizing in this process that the algorithms of all, sorry, I'm getting my screen ready. Oh, get out of there. Okay, so the algorithms of all the social media platforms really reward you with consistency. Okay, I mean, it's a huge deal. Consistency is an, a major deal. And the more you post, the better it gets. We're learning some really interesting things with Pinterest. And we're learning some super fascinating things with Facebook and with Twitter. Really fascinating things. And we may change the drip because of some things that we're learning in Twitter. Um, yeah, it's super fascinating stuff. Okay. So, but one of the things we wanted to make sure is that those that are with us, with Joseph Post, that they are kind of reminded to create content, but we don't want to be spammy. And so right now we have it set up where if you, you know, if you haven't published in a week, then we're going to let you know. And again, I'll bring up my screen. This thing just made me laugh because I wasn't exactly sure what I would be getting back. Um, so my business partner, who I'm not supposed to call my cousin, but he is, but he is super smart guy. But Anyway, he, um, I said, yeah, let's put something together, whatever. And he's like, do you have any text or anything that you want to use? And I'm like, no, just, you know, let's just test it out and see. We can worry about the text later. Okay, so I haven't published all week. And so this is what, this is what I get back, okay? Hey, loser, <laughs> it starts. The email <laughs> starts with, hey, loser, it's been at least seven days since you last posted original content. Your last posting date was 11-14-2019, which we already kind of saw which according to our calculations is 7.4 days since your last post. He's very particular, right? Specific. Well, computers are. Do you want to be a rock star? Question mark. Do you want to succeed? Question mark. Do you aspire to be the CEO of an MLM scheme? No offense to any MLMers out there. We're just being funny. Then get busy, exclamation point. Read some of the inspirational quotes, quotes we send out for you every day. Get inspired. Remember, we send you updated trending articles every day. Have you read any of those lately? <laughs> we can do all the heavy lifting for you. At least you can produce. If we can do all the heavy lifting, lifting for you, at least you can produce a little content. Come on, man. Have a great day from your friends at Josie Post. Oh, so that will be rewritten, but I definitely got a good chuckle from it today. So now we're trying to figure out um, you really have to be posting at least once a week, have to be. In order for the algorithm to, to, to um, consider you to be a real deal and continue to show your stuff to as many people as possible, it has to be at least once a week at the minimum, right? We probably should do more than that. And so I, I'm, you know, I'm sneaking in here on a Friday just so I don't, you know, I, just so I don't get in trouble right? I, I'm not willing to risk the, risk the algorithm uh, any longer. So that is the situation. That's kind of the update. We've got some, a really cool kind of a breakthrough. So my wife is a content creator and we've talked about, we, we want to have a solution for bloggers and um, Facebook live and right podcasters and all that. But we hadn't really thought about, we'd thought about, you know, Instagram folks that, that do videos on Instagram, but we hadn't really thought about people like my dear, sweet, smoking hot wife, who is a graphic artist. And so she does a lot of really amazing work uh, for her clients. And one of the, and um, one of her companies, she does a really amazing work, but she posts them on Instagram. And then she just has it set up where it automatically gets posted over to Facebook and that's it. So I'm like, oh, you know, honey, we should probably do something for you, duh. And so we started talking, but she did, she's not producing content in the sense that she's creating videos or anything like that. She's creating graphical content. And so um, kind of cool, but what we came up with this week was a way for her to, so she, when she posts a graphic now, 
And um, she just has to, she puts her hashtags and all that in on Instagram. So she instigates the whole thing on Instagram, but she just puts a little hashtag in there called, she can, there's two things she can do. She can post Jozu Blast, which then we'll take that and we'll go ahead and take that graphic that she's uploaded. We'll take that graphic um, and then we will take that graphic and literally just put it out in the exact same size it's in on every other platform. It's not optimum because some of the platforms like graphics in different sizes, but really the one that caught, that really has the most problem with it is Twitter. And for her avatar, there's not going to be a lot of people on Twitter. We're not even sure that we'll put her stuff on Twitter. We're still considering it. Um, so that, that totally works. So that blasts it out instantly. And then if she puts um, hashtag Jozu Drip, let's say that she put something that's a little more extensive or she did a video or did, she did something like that and she decided to put Jozu Drip in her hashtags, that signifies to us to go ahead and start doing like the drip that I just got back from and a confirmation from. And so then we would handle her work completely differently. And it doesn't matter if it's a video or a graphic, we would handle it differently. So cool stuff. I thought those were some good developments uh, this week. Um, I am, I got to get out of here. So I am actually going to up the uh, canyon to hang out in a, a cabin tonight with um so i i am uh, part of a how do i put this so in in my church i'm in um i guess a leadership position i guess and uh, our our group are all young people between the ages of 18 and 30 and we've rented a big cabin up the canyon and haven't they're having a major big sleepover and party and we're catering Chick-fil-A and it's going to be a big deal. There's like an indoor basketball court at this place. It's going to be mayhem. So I've got to get up there and, you know, 18 to 30, they don't need any chaperoning, but um, just going to have fun. And these, these, um, these young people are so much fun to hang around. And uh, I mean, I, I'm actually 97 years old, but because I hang out with these young people, it keeps me young. So anyway, Pretty cool stuff. Hey, look who's joined us. Hey, Ben. How are you, bud? So Ben's joined us. Another good friend of the program. So, all right. So I've got to get going and do that. But one thing I wanted to talk about very quickly, and it was something that I just kind of kicked around. This is, I'm going to call this a bit of a uh, life hack, if you will. It's, as an entrepreneur, we have to think about a lot of things. And, and sometimes that can get exhausting to try to think of new things, um, but it's very important. And so I do that. I, I, I haven't thought about this for a very long time, but I have this funny little thing where if I notice that I do something and I can't come up with a reason, then I will make myself think about why in the world I do it that way. So I, I'm not one that leaves the office very much. I um, I am a, a bit of an introvert. I like to stay in the office. I don't like to leave very often. And so I usually just make myself lunch here. I've got sandwich stuff. And I, so I usually make myself a turkey sandwich every day. And, uh, and I always make sure I have uh, uh, my Mount Olive Sweet Pickles because those are just fantastic. So anyway, I make a sandwich for myself every day. And as I was making the sandwich, I have a brand new loaf today, which is always heavenly, right? A brand new soft loaf of granny's bread. And uh, anyway, so I go in to um, have my sandwich. I take off that, you know, the bread end. And then I take out two slices and I put the bread end back in and I seal it back up. And I put it down and I thought, what in the world was that? What are you doing? Why not just eat the bread end? So I sat there looking at it. And it's not that I don't like bread ends. I don't know how you guys feel about bread ends. But I, I was a missionary in Japan, in Kobe, Japan. And that's where, and that's where my son's going to go which I'm thrilled about. But in Japan, the, the Japanese hate the bread ends. They call them panominis, which is literally bread ears. So this would be bread and this is the end of the bread, bread ears, and they won't eat them. So the Japanese cut up all their bread in perfect slices. The bread's like perfectly square. It's beautiful. The Japanese are so precise. Um, so we as cheapskate, horrible missionaries, not horrible, awesome missionaries, but cheapskates nonetheless, we didn't have a lot of money to live on. We would always go to the uh, bakery. Wow, all I could come up with was the Japanese word for bakery. So we would go to the bakery. I've been practicing Japanese with my son too, so a little messed up in the head right now, getting him ready to go. 
Um, so we would go to the bakery and they'd be like, and we'd say, hey, can we have your, your bread ears, the ends of the bread? And they'd be like, yeah. And so they would basically just start saving these things up for us and just give them to us. And so we always had free bread and it's really good bread. Love the bread in Japan, loved it. It was awesome. One of my favorite things about Japan, cinnamon sugar toast on bread ears. Oh, awesome. So anyway, so I love bread ends. I don't hate them. They're not, I don't have, I'm not opposed to them. I love them. Um, so I sat there and, and this is where I think some, some people, some of us just would blow that off and go sit back at the desk and go to work. Well, it's very important to try to figure out why you do things, why it is you do things, because it's usually brilliant and we don't give ourselves enough credit for being brilliant. So I sat there staring at the bread thinking, okay, here you go. Here's one of those things. You don't know why you do that. I don't, I, I seriously, there's not one reason I could think of, but somewhere along the line, I had decided that it's important not to eat, um, not to eat the, the bread ends. And I re, the last sandwich I had, right? Yesterday, I had a sandwich just on bread ends. So it's like, then you think, well, okay, are, is that your favorite? No, it's not my favorite. So I just took time to sort of sit down and be calm and think and, and make myself go through, there has to be a reason why I do this. Okay. And it's just a matter of learning to see your own brilliance. It's really, that's what the exercise is about. So I sat there thinking and thinking and thinking about it and trying to think back as to when I started doing it and what was going on. And then it dawned on me somewhere along the line, I don't like dry bread. I, I can't stand it. If it's not toasted, don't, I don't want dry bread. So I found out somewhere along the line that if I take the end of the bread and I keep that always against the bread going all the way down, then the entire loaf stays moist. And then I have, you know, the two at the end. And so that whole entire loaf of bread stays moist. If you take that end off, then that end piece becomes exposed and it can get dry. That's it. That's all I had to do. Well, once I came across that and realized that, it takes some practice to get back, to allow your mind to kind of get back and figure out why you do certain things that you do. But when I got there, you're not weird. You're not silly. You're not making up stuff. It's brilliant. That's brilliant. I keep the bread ends to keep the bread soft because I like soft bread. All of us do stuff like that. Okay, all of us have created solutions that we don't know why we've created these solutions. And we need to take the time to make sure that we are paying attention to the little things that we do that are different and figure out who we are and why we do those things because it's brilliant. It's an exercise in figuring out how brilliant you are is take the time to hang out with yourself and think about why it is you do the things that you do and it will expand your mind. It, it, will, it gives you confidence. It gives you the ability to see things a little differently and, and then pay attention to that, okay? So when you pay attention to that, um, then new solutions and your creativity will continue to grow. I can promise you that. So that's the whole point of this. So I challenge you this weekend to look around and see if you can find one thing that you do that's particular to you and you have absolutely no idea why you do it and hang out with that for a little bit, okay? Figure out the why of that practice and get to the bottom of it and see what you learn about yourself. Totally cool stuff. Okay, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I am going up the canyon to hang out with these really some of my favorite people in the world. And um, we're gonna eat Chick-fil-A and a lots of it. They always have great junk food there, which I'm excited about. Um, we will sleep in our own beds tonight and let the kids, some of them stay up all night. But then we, the leadership is in charge of making breakfast in the morning, which I can share with you is scrambled eggs, bacon, hash browns, orange juice, and, and tortillas so they can make breakfast um, burritos if they want to, sour cream and salsa. So, and we cook it all up for them and they eat to their heart's content and we'll have a great time. The coolest thing about um, what we do with this, and, and we've done it a little earlier this year, is we have so many kids coming from all over the world coming to BYU and, and, and moving into apartments and stuff, that, and they're all so busy that they really don't have time to get to know each other. And so when we do these big groups and we get together, and this one's kind of an all-nighter, 
I guarantee come to, come Sunday and Monday and going on, um, our little ward, our little group, church group, is going to be tight. There are going to be a lot of good friends and a lot of people hanging out. And just between you and me, um, we want these kids to marry up. I'm not, hey, I'm just being authentic with y'all. Okay, thanks, guys. Who, what do we got here? Oh, ah, ha, ha. thanks, Ben. Ben's going to take the Aaron challenge. I appreciate it. Hey, and you know what? I would really love to hear um, what you come up with. I really would. I want to know um, the brilliance that you find for yourself. So whether it's commenting here at the video or shoot me a message, both both Ben and, and Lance can get hold of me directly. But just, I, wouldn't, I wanna know. I wanna know what you find out about yourselves. It is totally fun to do it. I promise you it'll be fun. You'll think you're brilliant. And, and when you tell me, I'll tell you you're brilliant. All good stuff. Okay, guys, have a good weekend. Until next time, Aaron Stewart from the Little Black Couch. <laughs>